This is the G&G G2000, an AEG Airsoft replica released by G&G. This thing has been on the market for over a decade, originally debuting in 2010. It's seen its fair share of airsoft battles and is one of the more memorable airsoft replicas from that era. One that I remember seeing the very first time I ever played airsoft all those years ago. The real F2000 was intended to be a multi-purpose service rifle for the 21st century. It was released by Belgian manufacturer FN Herstel in 2001. Now those are the same guys that make the SCAR series and also the more closely related P90. The goal of many of the F2000's features was to create an enclosed system. One that would keep dust and debris out of the action, allowing it to last longer in the field without proper maintenance. That's partially why it looks so weird. Now, the most notable feature of the famous tactical tuna, aside from being mistaken for delicious seafood, was the ejection system. Spent brass collected in this chute along the side and was actually ejected out of the front, ensuring that you weren't ejecting spent brass all over your teammates. Unfortunately, the F2000 never really caught on. Its host of quirks proved to be too numerous for mainstream adoption. Nowadays, the F2000 is used by Belgian Special Forces and is the standard service rifle of the Slovenian Army. But you likely saw it first in Modern Warfare 2, Splinter Cell, or in the hands of faceless dystopian goons such as myself. The F2000 is an intermediate rifle platform. Because this is airsoft, you can pretty much do whatever you want to this thing and the platform should support it. You can convert it to HPA, you can lock it to semi and just do a long range DMR build, and it's short enough so that it could thrive in a CQB environment. All right, up front, are there any real advantages to using this thing? Not really. It's got a plastic body and yet it's fairly heavy. The ergonomics are weird, and they definitely take some getting used to. And it's plagued by technical issues right out of the box. So, up front, we need to acknowledge that this is not the most viable AEG to pick. But that's okay. Why? Because through sheer grit and determination, lots of corporate funding, I made this thing into a plastic throwing death machine. And every time I take it out to the field, it makes the enemy team cry with shame. And if that's not what airsoft's about, then I don't know what is. Right side. Here. Let's talk about practical use. The thing that took me the longest to get used to was the actual layout of the gun. Now, I'm very familiar with rifle patterns like this M4. It's the standard configuration. The F2000 is a bullpup, which lends to its tuna-like shape, but the layout is much different than something like this. So with the magazine behind the trigger, I had to get used to reaching back here and kind of cocking the gun to the side for reloads. The button release is made so that when you grip the magazine, your index finger automatically triggers that release button. Look how easy that is. So even though it's different, it's still very fast. I took this thing to an eight hour mil sim, played with it all day long, and it was a great performer. However, when I was done, my wrist was destroyed. I could not move it either direction, and it was because when I was holding this rifle in a low ready position, the angle on my wrist was so unnatural that I was like having to basically give it a break and roll it around. Now, I've gotten used to it and it's not as big of a problem now. I guess I just kind of adapted my grip when I'm using this particular rifle, but that's a big problem. That's not necessarily an issue with the G&G F2000 so much as it is with the actual F2000 as a platform in general. All that said, it maneuvers very well. It's compact and it stays close to your body. It's easy to move around within the field and engage enemies with quickly. One down. Something that you've undoubtedly noticed that I don't have on here is a sling. Definitely get a sling for this thing so you can retain it and you don't have to do a one hand thing when you go for your sidearm. I found a good one, I haven't purchased it yet. It is linked in the description if you wanna check that out. It is for real F2000s, 
So you are going to pay a little bit more for it, but you do have the added benefit of build quality, which is arguably more important. And I know you're looking for that sweet, sweet flat bottom rail. Fortunately, if you can find one, it's going to run you upwards of $150, if not more. And that is if you can find one. I have a link in the description to a 3D printed option that is about the same. I do have that one on order and I will be posting at least an update on Instagram so you can follow me right there. The biggest thing we need to know about the F2000 is can it put shots on target when you're on the field? And in my experience, yes. Once you get used to the platform itself, how it's laid out, it can definitely support you on the field and it will put shots where it needs to go. As always, we use torso sized targets. It's practical for what you're gonna encounter on the airsoft field and pinpoint accuracy isn't exactly what we're looking for. But on this guy, basically all five shots landed right in the, uh, right in the middle of the target. You got one, two, three, four, five there. They're very close together within about, I'd say seven inches or so. So that's not, uh, that's not a question as to whether or not you're gonna hit that if you have a full um, man size target. So let's bump this out to 50. The thing that I, wanted to make sure, um, well, you might notice we have a little bit of brush occluding the target. You know, it's kind of what you're gonna encounter on the airsoft field. You're very rarely gonna have a regular target. So I say, why the heck not? Let's use this extremely biased testing scenario to determine whether this is a good thing for you to use or not. Okay, that was four on. Um, here's one for sure, and then I had two to the right there. Again, if we're, if we're counting this whole thing as a human-sized target with, with arms, or so legs included here, okay. it's, pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, it's definitely usable. So yeah, F2000 gets a, at least a B plus. <laughs> We're not looking for laser beam accuracy. We're looking for, is this thing gonna hit a torso sized target, which we're likely going to encounter situations like this in the field, right? So case in point with this one, he's kind of occluded by brush. You can't really, you don't have a perfect shot. You wanna be able to make sure you're making contact with some part of that. Cause again, when you're on the airsoft field, if I get hit in the little tassel thing down here, I mean, I'm still dead. That's what we're looking for with these accuracy tests. I just wanted to kind of clarify that because it might seem weird that I'm not like trying to hit a 10 ring or something like that. So as we're laying on the ground, this thing has a really blocky profile and it does not really want to sit down. Um, however, if you are shooting from a prone position like this, it is possible and it is actually not super awkward to get it seated there so that you can get a good sight picture. It is, like I said, it takes a lot of getting used to because it is such a different layout. But, let's see. You know, it's really not, uh, it's not super weird once you get used to it. It's, it just kind of fits. The external build quality here is fantastic. G&G has a huge lineup of Airsoft replicas and this matches the quality of all of their other releases. I just can't fault this thing on looks or durability. It's made of that nice impact resistant polymer and has great weight to it. I can shake this thing and there's no wobble, there's no bend, there's no play between the different components of the chassis. It's built like a tank and that's important for me. I want something that at least looks and feels cool. Shell, pull up a 60 second timer. We're gonna go over all of the external features of the F2000. And if I can do it in less than 60 seconds, you're contractually obligated to go to our website and purchase a tactical patch. Hey, listen, I don't make the rules and you sign the contract. Timer starts now. You have 14 millimeter negative threads, a metal outer barrel. You have a replica gas block here. On the right side of the replica, there's this ejection tube system. Bonus points for realism because you have a spring-loaded trap door. 
Two sling loops up front there, a flat top rail for mounting optics, a removable front sight, and a back flip up peep sight. On the left side of the rifle, you have your spring loaded charging handle, P90 trigger and P90 style fire selector, a thumb hole stock there. There's your body pin. This flip up trap door reveals your hop up unit. Down here is your magazine ejection button and magwell. A big fat stock here with two sling points for mounting a sling, a rubber butt pad, and if you pop that off, plenty of room for batteries. That's 54 seconds. You gotta buy a patch. Let's go through the internals, some of the issues that this platform has, and some of the upgrades I've made to address those. Of all of the airsoft guns that I have ever owned, the F2000 has to be the easiest one to take apart. Now, if you've ever taken apart a standard M4 AEG, you know what I mean. If you don't have the right tools, it can be a very aggravating process. The F2000 features an almost completely toolless takedown. Um, to remove the back plate, you do need a screwdriver, but everything else you can do by hand. First thing we're gonna do is clear the replica. Take the magazine out, we're gonna check butt plate. Pull that off, check for battery. Looks good. This pushes out forward. And then it, that allows the entire front of the replica to come right off. This is your upper receiver component. It slides out on these rails that are on the forend component. The great thing about the upper receiver is that it is all held together as one piece, including your hop up and barrel assembly. And then you have the back component. Now this is really where all of your guts are. You're gonna look back here. You have a black back plate section right there. Now typically there are two set screws that hold this back plate in place. I removed those for time, but all you're gonna basically do is pull that off, set it to the side, and all that's left to do is remove the gearbox. The gearbox should basically just pop right out. It sometimes helps to open up this little window here and push on the gearbox so that it just slides out like that. And you can just pull it out. And there it is, gearbox. and your receiver. Looking at this, the F2000 does have a proprietary gearbox. It looks a lot like a P90 gearbox, but it is unique to the F2000. Uh, your trigger unit here is uh, also proprietary, as well as your tappet plate inside the gearbox. The other uh, proprietary component that is gonna make a big impact is your hop-up unit. It is plastic and it is uh, unique to the F2000. There are no aftermarket parts available for that component. However, the F2000 does have a lot of components that can be replaced with uh, standard performance parts. Um, your inner barrel and your bucking are both cross compatible with standard AEG components. And the other big one that's important, your motor and your gear set are both cross compatible with uh, version 2 parts. This is a long type motor that's held inside of a P90 style cage. All of your compression components are also cross compatible. Putting it back together, very straightforward. Slide this into place. Now the general rule of thumb with any airsoft gun is if something's not moving forward the way it's supposed to, don't force it. <laughs> In my experience, Airsoft guns do not have the same ruggedness of actual firearms, and therefore if you try to force stuff, they tend to break really easily. So after you put your back plate on there, you're just gonna slide your guts in there, put your butt plate back on, and then the last thing to do, make sure your takedown pin is out. Just like that. There you can see. And then you're gonna slide along these rails, your upper receiver. And everything just slides right back into place. And you're good to go. If you read or watch other reviews on the F2000, you'll quickly learn that this platform has quite a few issues out of the box, all of which I've experienced while owning it. So there's actually, you know, testable evidence that that's true. While that does say that this platform has real usability issues, the F2000 is unique. 
partially because it's been around for so long and partially because people like it so much, you can find upgrades that will address the actual issues with the platform. So the first issue that I encountered was the trigger. The trigger kind of sucks. It has slow turnover out of the box and you're eventually gonna run into issues with the trigger contacts. If you don't know what those are, they're basically electrical connectors that make the gun fire when you pull the trigger. When they start to wear down, the gun might just stop firing entirely or switch over to full auto and every time you pull the trigger, it's just on full auto. That is an issue for obvious reasons. Regardless of whether you experience those issues or not, I would highly recommend that you replace this with the M-Trigger. This is the Shadow Regime M-Trigger and it is bar none the best upgrade you can make to your G&G F2000. It is a 3D printed trigger housing with low frequency wiring and it can be bundled with a MOSFET like I have here. This is a Perun AB Plus MOSFET and in addition to the numerous benefits of using a MOSFET, it has cool things like a programmable burst fire function. That's actually what I'm running right now. Every time you pull the trigger, it fires twice instead of a single time. You can program this up to five, I believe. And that obviously gives you a slight advantage on the field if your field allows for burst fire because you're putting out more plastic per shot. I will note, the newer versions of the F2000 have electronic triggers but I would still recommend the M trigger. That's just given my personal experience with it. I really like it and I field tested it. It's a fantastic upgrade. For power, I'm running an 11.1 Titan battery. This helps increase the trigger response just a little bit. Also, the MOSFET recommends that you use at least an 11.1, so added benefit, I guess. The next issue is magazine compatibility. We'll pop on over to installation 42 for a field test. The biggest issue that you're gonna have with this usability wise is magazine compatibility. You might have a ton of plastic mid cap magazines because they were cheap and that's just what you bought, similar to myself. Uh, this gun does not like plastic mid caps. What I've heard is that magazines, even plastic magazines made by G&G, &G, the same company that manufactures this gun, uh, those will actually work in this. However, I haven't tested them myself, so I can't verify that. However, I did want to demonstrate, this is an Elite Force mid cap. If I seat this in there, hey, it looks pretty good, right? But it doesn't actually seat, it doesn't engage the magazine catch. And it won't even feed. It's dry fires. So, that's garbage. What you actually want are metal mid cap magazines. Now, the ones that I've had the most luck with are these. These are Colt licensed AR-15 mid caps, and these fit perfectly. And they feed great. I'll have a support document for the F2000 with all of the uh, upgrades and equipment that I've used to support it. That'll be in the description and in the comments down below. And I'm going to continuously update that as I find more stuff for this gun. Also, if you know anything about that, be sure to leave me a comment uh, or send me a message so that I can keep updating that resource page and we can really optimize this thing to be the best that it can be. And so, while the F2000 is a terrible piece of crap, it's actually very awesome. But why? At every turn, this airsoft gun has given me nothing but trouble. It's a challenge to learn and improve. It's hard to troubleshoot issues and fix problems. But this airsoft gun represents everything I love about this sport and hobby. It's rewarding to overcome technical challenges. It's exciting to beat opponents on the field with something that I built. And how many conversations has this thing started? How many people wanted to come and test it out and see how it worked? And those people that out on the field I teamed up with later, it's just fun. And that's why I can say without a hint of sarcasm, despite its flaws, despite the numerous issues I've had, the G&G F2000 is my favorite airsoft gun. So don't take the game too seriously. Use weird stuff and stay corporate approved.